Welcome back. This is Mark Rudolph, branding advisor to CEOs and author of three books on branding for CEOs. You can get those books at markrudolph.com slash books. And you can see all of my videos at markrudolph.tv. So don't write to me to ask where you can see my videos. They are at markrudolph.tv. Today I want to talk about the Jewish heritage in Israel. When you sit down tonight for your Thanksgiving dinner with your indoctrinated kids coming home from their Marxist professors who hate Jews and hate Israel, and they want to imbue you with the tales of how Israelis are a bunch of colonialists and racists and occupiers, you can educate them by showing them this video. You remember in the last video when I talked about the two-stage solution, not the two-state solution, the two-stage solution, which really means the eradication of Israel. I showed you some bullet points, a timeline of early Israeli history. Let's look at that again. 1900 BCE. Isaac, Abraham's son, rules over Israel. So Israel's been around almost for millennia. And you come down and you see, for example, that King Solomon, son of David, builds the first temple in Jerusalem in 970 BCE. And Solomon's first temple is destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC. King Herod built the second temple in 515 BCE. The Romans destroyed that temple, except for the Western Wall, in 70 CE. And as I reminded you last time, in 135 CE, Roman Emperor Hadrian conquered Israel, changed the name to Palestina. And that's where Palestine comes from. And Palestine doesn't really mean anything. It was never a country. It was only because Hadrian named it after the Philistines, an ancient tribe long gone from the region. But he did it just to stick it to the Jews. Well, let's move on. I created a different timeline here so you can see that Judaism has been in Israel since 1900 BCE. That's 3,923 years. And then we move up and we look at Christianity. The Edict of Thessalonica made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. So it's been in Israel for 1,643 years. You can see that Jesus was born in the year 1 CE, just to put things in perspective. And then Muhammad was born in Saudi Arabia in 570 CE. The Muslims invaded Jerusalem in 638 CE, and that was 1385 years ago. That was called the Conquest of Jerusalem. So Islam has been in Israel only 1385 years compared to Judaism, which has been there 39, 23 years, about three times as long. So when the Muslims come into Jerusalem to conquer it, who's the occupier? Who's the colonialist? Who's accusing Israel of being an occupier? As you can see, by looking at the facts, it's all backwards. And the last thing on this timeline is the Hamas massacre, which occurred on October 7th, of 2023. So now you can see the picture of Jews in Israel for almost four millennia. This is reality, folks. The Jews own Israel. That's their heritage, our heritage. Never forget that. And when your snot-nosed Gen Zero kids try to berate you at the dinner table tonight at Thanksgiving, set them straight please. Let's move on. Israel has had many enemies and conquerors over the years. 
the Babylonians, the Romans, the Ottoman Turks, the Muslims, even the Christians with their crusades. And now the Muslims again with Hamas, the Houthi rebels, the Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, and Iran to the east, which is funding and organizing all of this. It never ends and it never will. But you know, Barack Obama was a big enemy of Israel. When Barack Obama was going out the door on December 23rd of 2016, the UN Security Council had put forth a resolution 2334 requiring Israel to hand over territory to the Arabs. Obama didn't vote against this. It was 14 nothing and one abstention. Barack Obama had his ambassador to the UN, Samantha Power, abstain, which is the coward's way of saying, yes, we agree with this. One of the properties that resolution was requiring Israel to hand over is the Western Wall, the holiest site of Judaism. That wall is 2,538 years old. It belongs to the Jews. Obama didn't care. Give it to the Arabs. Obama is an enemy of Israel and the Jews. Obama also referred to ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, as ISIL, which meant the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. And the Levant includes Israel in their minds, and it did historically. This means that Obama was deferring to the terrorists. He's the only president ever to refer to this group as ISIL. He never got rid of ISIL as he promised to do. Trump did it in four days. But I want you to see Obama referring to this band of terrorists as ISIL. Go. My fellow Americans, Tonight, I want to speak to you about what the United States will do with our friends and allies to degrade and ultimately destroy the terrorist group known as ISIL. You ought to read Bibi's book. 654 pages. I read every single one of them. In it, he describes how shabbily and disrespectfully Obama treated him. He said that in the second volume of his autobiography, which now, of course, is going to include the Hamas massacre on October 7th, he's going to, go, going to go into greater detail of how badly Obama treated him. But he thought he needed something to save for volume two. Anyway, I wanted to bring this new perspective to you so you could understand how long the Jews have been in Israel, how long the Christians have been there, how long the Muslims have been there. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Jews are occupiers of their own country. They are occupants. It's their heritage. They've been there since 1900 BCE. That's almost four millennia. When you're doing messaging, get your facts straight. I try to bring you the facts about Israel. Teach these facts to your kids, tonight and any other time you talk to them. Don't you let them tell you what their Marxist professors tell them. All of this hatred against Jews in Israel, don't accept it. And if you don't like what they're hearing in school, stop sending in those tuition checks. This is Mark Rudov at markrudov.com. Until next time.